Today we're going to discuss some of the muscles from the posterior leg from the knee down to the foot. We're going to start with a muscle called the flexor digitorum longus. Okay, let's go over the flexor digitorum longus. This is one of the deeper muscles in your calf. We think of the two calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and soleus. This is underneath that. This is Tom, Dick, and Harry. So what we're going to look right now is the flexor digitorum longus. So this is the muscle, the, the dick part of that. <laughs> okay. Now, if we look actually in the back of the leg here, where we've taped Mickey's leg, you'll see the pink tape here. This is the general location of the flexor digitorum longus. Now, if we start looking at the origin of this, actually you can refer to the model over here too. This pink area over here comes down here, a red area. This is where the flexor digitorum longus originates. Now, it's going to go and follow that pathway down the leg and the inside of the leg. So basically, it's going to run to the medial malleolus. Bring your foot up here a little bit. Good. Turn it slightly here. And obviously, the tape's coming off a little bit here. And it goes by the medial malleolus and an area called the sesentaculum tali on the calcaneus. And it'll follow the plantar surface of the bottom of the foot. Now, we've got pretty thick strands here, but it's actually a lot thinner than this because the tendons just basically insert into uh, the toes from two through five. Now, if we look at the actions here, Mickey, just go right up in your toes there. This is what it assists in. It assists in plantar flexion of the toes two through five. It's actually a very powerful plantar flexor. It's also involved in inversion of the foot and it supports the arch there. So it's this really interesting muscle. In terms of the innervation of this, the tibial nerve is involved in getting the information to this muscle, and that's S1 to S3. Now we're going to talk about the tibialis posterior muscle. So again, Tom, Dick, and Harry. We already talked about the dicks, and now we're going to talk about Tom. Okay. Now, if we look at the posterior leg here, in green here, we have it outlaid for the tibialis posterior. Now, I'm just going to bring the skeleton back in here, and we're going to look at a little more medial here, this red area here, not the outside one, but the medial one here, and this is the origin of the tibialis posterior. It arises from the posterior superior tibia, fibular shafts, and also from the interosseous membrane, which is actually an area between here, connective tissue between the fibula and the tibia. Now, the pathway of this particular muscle is just a little more lateral as compared to the flexor digitorum longus. Now we come down the leg here and it's posterior again to the medial malleolus and anterior to the sesentaculum tali. So bring your foot up here. So just along the ankle here, underneath the foot. The difference is on this one is that it's inserting in several areas of the bottom of the foot. And again, we've got fairly wide tape here, but I just want to show you the general region. The insertion is on the prominent medial tubercle of a bone called the navicular. Now, so you can hold your foot up there for a second, okay? Great. <laughs> I'm going to try and show you here. Now, if we sort of look at the medial side here of the foot, we'll see that we have the, as it comes down here underneath the calcaneus, that we get onto the navicular bone here. Now, right there. And then it, but it also inserts onto the cuboid, but only the cuboid we usually think of as a bone on the lateral side. But on the medial side here on the cuboid, that's where you also have a bit of insertion. And on the lateral cuneiform and metatarsals 2 to 4. So basically, this kind of represents the general area. And a lot of these tendons are crossing over each other. Now, in terms of the action, let's bring it back down there. The action again is plantar flexion. Go back on your toes. Also, inversion and also supports the arches. Bring that back down. Okay. Now, there's a point here I'd like to make which is really interesting, is that the tendons of the tibialis posterior and a muscle on the side here called the peroneus longus come from opposite sides. Now, so we have muscles on the outside of the calf here and on the inside. Now, this forms a sling under part of the foot. Now, this actually acts as a crucial support for the arch of the foot. Really interesting muscle. So let's go over the third deep flexor of the calf muscle, which is the flexor helicus longus. Now, if we basically look at the back of the calf here, we'll see that in the blue tape here, farther down, 
that we look at the insertion, this arises from the posterior inferior fibula and the interosseous membrane. If we go over to uh, the Earl of Bergamont here on the leg, we'll see in this rare area down here that this is the origin of the flexor helicus longus. Now, again, the pathway, this runs posterior to the medial malleolus on the inside of here. Just bring your leg up a little there, Mickey. Good. Along a groove along the posterior talus behind this area of the calcaneus called the sustentaculum tali and along the medial plantar surface of the foot. Now you see this halcus means essentially big toe. So this runs down to the big toe and inserts on the distal phalanx of the first toe. Now the actions for this are basically plantar flexion of the big toe and the ankle. So why don't you come back up here a little bit, Mickey? So that's plantar flexion of the ankle. Bring your, come back down this foot. Bring your foot up here. Now, if I was to take the toe and I was actually bring this down this way, this would be plantar flexion of the big toe. So there's one more thing I want to go over, and that's why we use the acronym Tom, Dick, and Harry. So let's just take a closer look at the ankle here. Now, if we basically look at the different color tape here, we're going to see that the green represents the positions of different structures. So the green one is the tibialis posterior. We get onto the pink underneath here, and this is the flexor digitorum longus. The next one in red will be the artery, which is the posterior, posterior tibial artery. The nerve, which is the tibial nerve. And the one in blue here is going to be the flexor halicus longus. So, Tom, Dick, Ann, and the Ann represents A-N, artery nerve, and Harry, the muscle. So these are all the tendons, the nerves, and the artery in a smaller area that actually goes around the ankle. A really easy way to remember the order of these structures as they pass around the medial malleolus. So now we're going to go more superficial. We just discussed the three deep muscles of the calf. Now we're going to discuss an area we call the triceps surrey. This is a combination of, well, two different muscles in terms of names, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius being more superficial, the soleus being deep. But in reality, it's more like three muscles because we have two heads of the gastrocnemius and we have the soleus muscle all forming together to form a co-joint tendon called the Achilles tendon right at the base as it inserts into the heel. So let's look at this in a little more detail. So let's go over the deepest of the calf muscles, the soleus. We have this outlined here in green tape. Now if we look basically, the tape represents the borders of this muscle. Now it's a lot thicker on the lateral side than the medial side. It originates from the posterior superior tibia and fibula. It crosses two joints in the ankle, the ankle joint and the subtalar joint. And it basically inserts onto the posterior aspect of the heel bone or the calcaneus. Now, if we look at the actions of the calf muscles, primarily it's a plantar flexor. So just come up on your toes there, Mickey. Just coming right up there. Good. So that's, that's the primary action of these muscles, this one here. Now, let's take a look at the gastrocnemius. So, let's go over the gastrocnemius muscle. Now, we have this outlined in red tape here, and if we look at the border of that muscle, we'll see that it overlays on top of the soleus. There's actually two heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. Now, the majority of the muscle is actually up here, and if we look at the lower part here, this is more tendinous in nature, and this basically co-joins to form the Achilles tendon. Now, it originates from the bottom of the femur here. Now if we basically the leg here, we'll see the femur goes down. And from the two condyles of the femur, that's where it originates from, the two heads. And we'll see that it actually goes down the leg, joins up with the tendon of the soleus, and basically inserts on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus. Now, as we were mentioning earlier, the primary action of the calf muscles is plantar flexion. Now, why don't you go back up there, and you're straight up, and that's the action. This is a very strong muscle. Uh, the triceps are one of the strongest muscles in the 